Hi again, uh, this is Giovanni Lobos, and now I'm going to talk to you really quickly through uh, the guide to dragonflies and damselflies. So basically how to identify them. First things first, what is the difference between a dragonfly and a damselfly? Well, the uh, main difference is first size. Dragonflies are much smaller, much, sorry, much larger than uh, damselflies. Damselflies are usually very slim and are about three to five centimeters, whereas dragonflies, they can measure from six to 10, even 12 centimeters, depending on the species. Uh, so they're a lot larger and stouter compared to damselflies. Another important thing is uh, the wings. So the wings of dragonflies, okay, first things first, uh, they have two pairs of wings, four and high and the ones for dragonflies have different shape. So, for example here, you can see that the forewing is very different from the hindwing in shape. This one, they have like a kind of triangle in the bottom. Well, not, not a triangle, but ha has an angle, very, very marked angle compared to the forewing. Whereas in damselflies, like the ones we have here, the shape is very similar in both fore and hind. And the other things, the eyes. So damselflies have their eyes very, very separate in the head. So it's like one eye here and the other on the other side. Whereas in dragonflies, they basically form the entire head or most of it. And they are together in most of the species. There's only one, which we'll see later on, that is a bit separate. But still, they are very close to each other compared to damselflies that have them very, very separate. So again, this is the guide that you will have in your kit. This is a very useful and easy guide. Um, so I'm going to talk you briefly through it and probably it will, hopefully it will help you identify dragonflies and damselflies a lot easier. So, first things first, uh, you have all of these. The first section, the first section, all of this up to here, these are damselflies. So, these are uh, the species found in UK. So, for example, you have the emerald damselfly, which is, it's a very beautiful damselfly, but it's usually around, found in August, uh, more or less and it has a kind of shiny emerald, as the name says it. So it's in color, it's, it's really different to probably other damselflies that you will commonly see. Um, and you have the tip of the abdomen is a bit blue. Uh, they can range from green, gold, to bronze color. Uh, and they're usually a bit larger than other damselflies. Um, it, I don't know how likely it is that you will find this in your garden pond because these are usually found in very kind of acidic bogs. Um, but you never know. The one that you will very likely, or well, depends on when you are um, uh, when you are going uh, dragonfly watching, uh, is a large red. As the name says, it it's large and it's red. That, it, that is a very, very easy species to identify. So that's Persoma nymphula. It's this right here. This is a small red, but it's very unlikely that you'll find it in Leeds, probably in the southern part of the UK you can. So it's also red, but it's much smaller uh, compared to the large red, which is about four or five centimeters. So it's basically red. The eyes are also red. Um, it can be a bit black like in the abdomen, but it's mostly yellow, red. This is very, very easy to identify. And you have these other two species which are beautiful, but very unlikely that you will see it in ponds since this is a riverine species. But these are the demoiselles. So these are very, very different to others because one, they're larger, and most importantly, the color is very shiny, and the wings, especially in males, have a dark color. So this is a banded demoiselle. And this is a beautiful demoiselle. Um, again, this is very unlikely that you will find in ponds. 
but in case you live near a river, it can happen that you may find these kind of visiting your pond. Um, these are the most common <laughs> that you will find. So these are part of the Cenagrian genus. Uh, you have basically all of these and this. So um, they are all very similar in color and shape, but I'm just going to talk you through the ones that you will most likely find, which are basically two species. The azure damselfly that you have right here, it's blue, the name says it itself, and uh, the female is green, she like green most of the times. Um, I think, well, the thing is that this is very difficult to identify unless you have it in hand. So if you can catch it, that's great. Otherwise, um, actually it's very likely that if you find a tiny blue damselfly in your pond, it will most likely be this one right here. This is another one very, very similar. Uh, this is the variable damselfly, Sinagrin Uh Basically, the female is easier to identify. This is mostly blue rather than green from the one here. Um, but uh, again, uh, these two have very, very similar um, features, so it's really difficult to identify them, even if you have them in hand. So if you have uh, difficulties identifying any of these, it doesn't really matter if it's like to species level. We can just say it's Cenagrian. This is the common blue, which is also it's these three are very very similar in color and shape. Uh, you won't. It's very difficult to identify it once un unless you have it in hand. Um, what it does have is that this um, in the lateral part of the thorax, which is this right here, you'll find a tiny tiny strip that goes only halfway to the thorax, whereas this one doesn't have it. But if you're not an expert identifying I, um, or well, identifying drag damselflies, it's, it can be very difficult. Uh, however, this species prefers large lakes or rivers or basically large water bodies. So it's unlikely that you'll find it in your garden pond unless you have a very, very large garden pond. Um, anyways, now we're going to Ishnor elegans. This is the blue-tailed damselfly, and the name says it. It's um, easy, very easy to identify because um, it, the thorax is greenish with the dorsum. The dorsum is black. Uh, most of the abdomen is actually black, but in the tip, you will see it will it's like really bright blue. So you have basically green, black, and blue. The male is really easy to identify. Uh, the female comes in all sorts of colors in all this range. So it goes from a color that is very, very similar to the male all the way to purple, pink, orange, dull brown, and yellow. Um, in all cases, or in most cases, you will see the bright blue tip. So it's still easy to identify. And um, Okay, so all dragonflies and damselflies have this kind of dot in the tip of the wings. So Ishnor elegans has that mark, but it's by color. That is, half of it is white and the other half is black. That is um, a very easy feature for to identify the species, and regardless of the color, that, that is very distinctive. So um, if you have it in hand, that would be very useful. If not, colors, you will see the bright blue tip and you will see, and you will know that's a blue tailed de uh, damselfly. And now we're going to dragonflies, which are very hard to catch. So <laughs> if you happen to catch one, then great. If not, it's very likely that you will only be able to identify it um, just by looking at it. Um, so you have, I'm just going to talk you through the most common ones. So you have the four spotted chaser, the name says it, you have, the wings have four, or each wing has a very dark mark in here. So they, I mean, count them all, it equals four. So you have the four spotted chaser. 
Uh, this is the Broad Body Chaser. This is, um, it, it's very stout, it's kind of chubby fat, uh, but the abdomen is also bright blue. So that one's also very easy to identify, at least the male. The female is a bit yellow, it's not, it's not in bright colors. Most of the females are actually in very dull color. Uh, both dragonflies and damselflies. Uh, but in this species, it's kind of yellow. It's still, the body's still very stout. So that is very, um, that's a very distinctive characteristic of this species. Um, it's very unlikely that you'll find this is the scarce chaser. The name says it itself. It's, it's not very commonly found. Um, and then you have the orthetrums, the black tail skimmer. So this is blue, it's slim, but the tip is black, so um, I, that's like the main difference between these two, that this one is a lot stouter, whereas this, is, this has a very slim abdomen. And then we're going to the darters. So these are medium-sized dragonflies, they will be about six to seven centimeters, and most of them, or at least males, have bright red to orange color once they're mature. Um, they are... Uh, it's hard to identify them if they're not mature yet. That is, if they're yellowish, kind of dull color. Uh, but the wings are the most important feature. Uh, so you have the red veined darter, the name says it itself, it has red veins. Uh, the ruby darter, which is basically bright red throughout. And um, the abdomen, as you can see, it's kind of like very slim, and then in the tip, it kind of goes a bit wider, we can say. So it's very slim, and these segments are like a bit broader, and they have like these black markings in the end. Um, so then you have also the common darter, which uh, this is very likely that you'll find it's common throughout the UK, um, pretty, mu pretty much anywhere. Um, this one is uh, bright red, and uh, it has like yellow brownish thorax. Um, uh, females of all of them are mostly yellow. Uh, you will find more detail once you like read fully in this. Uh, again, if you can't identify the species, Sympetrum is fine. You don't have to identify it all the way to species, or only to genus, or you can actually just say, I found a red dragonfly. and that's very useful for us as well. Um, over here you have the black darter. Um, name says it. It's black. It's also medium size, so it's about six or seven centimeters. Um, and you have the yellow winged darter, which again has like very distinctive yellow markings in the beginning. Um, these are not very common. Lycorinia dubia is not very common in weeds or in. You can find it in UK, but it's not very common. Um, and then you have large dragonflies, the hawkers. Uh, these um, are usually between 8 to 10 centimeters, even up to 12, if it's like the emperor, which is this one right here. Uh, so these are easier to identify, especially when they're... Uh, you don't have to really hold them. Well, you probably would if you want to go all the way to species, but otherwise... Um, you can just say, it looks like this, or very, very briefly, it should be alright. Um, so you have the uh, migrant hawker, not very common. The azure hawker is from Scotland. Uh, it's a blue, but I don't think you'll find it in Leeds. Very, 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 I don't, it hasn't been reported here at all. Uh, the hairy dragonfly, uh, the name says it. The thorax is very, very hairy, the name says it itself. Uh, then you have the southern hawker, this is very common. Uh, so you have um, like mostly black markings, but in color you will see like like an apple green and blue in the abdomen. Uh, and females are mostly green, so it's black, brown, and green. But in the tip of the abdomen you can see that these two blue markings are kind of fused, so they make one that looks like a big mountain, or like two main mountains, whereas in other dragonflies you see two separate markings. These ones are like combined, 
uh, so that will be the southern hawker. This one is very easy to identify even at a distance because it's, well this is first of all the brown hawker, so it's, it's very big uh, and it's mostly brown. Uh, so if you see some, if you see a dragonfly that it's about 10 centimeters and brown, it will be most likely the brown hawker. Uh, once you have it in hand, you will see that it has like, m like blue markings throughout. Um, the female will have mostly green to yellowish color, but they're mostly all brown. The wings are also have like this tan amber color. Um, and then you have the emperor dragonfly. This one is the biggest species in the UK. It, this one is very easy to identify because the thorax is bright green and all of the abdomen is blue. So if you see this one passing by, you will you will definitely know that it's an emperor dragonfly, especially because when it's flying nearby you will hear a helicopter. Um, you have more in here, you have the Norfolk Hawker, the Downy Emerald. Um, all of these have um, like a bronze Green, like shiny green color. Uh, again, these are very unlikely that you will find um, around your pond. But still, you have okay. You have the golden ringed dragonfly, uh, which the name says it. It ha will it's mo it will mostly be like shiny black, but with yellow rings throughout the abdomen. Um, this is found mostly in rivers and uh, it's very sensitive to any sort of stressors or disturbances so it's not very likely that you will find this in your pond unless you live in a very um, in a place where it's where there's like a lot of wildlife and it's in a very very natural state if you say um, but the basic or the easiest way to identify this species is that the eyes uh, unlike the rest of the dragonflies, the eyes are a bit separate. They're a bit separated in this case, uh, so that is very easy to identify. Again, not very likely that you'll find this, but it's good to know. Uh, this is Annex uh, again, greenish and blue throughout. Um, and that is very basically it. Uh, on the other side, you'll find more details about um, larvae or the immature stage of dragonflies and damselflies, what they do, how they produce, how they um, go from larvae to adult, and many, many, many more other stuff. This is a very interesting guide and very useful. I, at least I find it very useful and I hope you do as well. Uh, so uh, if, again, there are any other questions, uh, do not hesitate to contact me and, well, I hope you find the guide and this video very useful.